The lengthy report from the Marines on the accident that killed nine people last year on the training mission off the California coast chronicles a long chain of failures that culminated in the sinking of an amphibious assault vehicle. Bad equipment, poor training, and a lack of experience, quote, doomed this crew and its passengers to a preventable tragedy. While we dig into the details of that roughly 2,000 page examination, Marine Corps Times reached out to the families of those killed last July to hear some of what they had to say about what they learned from the report. Those, those boats should not even, they were not seaworthy. They were junk and they shouldn't even have been put in the water. They murdered my son. Whoever has this authority to send these boys out, I feel like that day they said, you know what? You're, it's your day of death. They were failed from the minute these were chopped into service to the minute it sank. Every yeah. person should, should be, be held accountable. They all had, had a hand in this. They all had a hand in this. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the family of Private First Class, Brian Baltiera, who related some gut-wrenching details of their son's last moments and talked about how the report left them with unanswered questions. Me and my son, you know, you know, he told me that the, the track is, is smoking, we stop, we, you know, we need to find out what's going on. And and then uh, a, a couple hours later, my son says, Dad, Dad, we're, we're going to take a dip in the ocean now. And that was my, my last communication with Brian. It was hard. It was hard to see what, you know, the boys went through. That our Brian, we know him. You know, we know how he's like. He's, you know, he was 18. He's, you know, he's, you know, he's kind of goofy. You know, 18. You know, a boy. You know, I know he would have been in panic. You know, one of the survive the survivors were telling us that, you know, what really got us was when um, everything was in chaos. Um, Evan and Brian were were praying together because they knew, you know. They, that's all. That's all they had, you know, in the darkness. They were praying together because um, they knew they couldn't make it. They weren't going to make it. I, I'm I'm looking at the at the U.S. military, the Marines, the Navy, and also the manufacturer of the AAVs. This was a 49 year old vehicle. I want Congress to, to pull in the, the military, the, the United States Marine Corps, and start asking questions, these very difficult questions of what happened to these nine boys. What happened? Why? And I think this will have to be explained by them. Why, why did this occur? I also talked to the mother of Private First Class, Evan Bath, who said the amount of mistakes that led to the death of her son were unbelievable. I am angry because my son should not have died. My son should still be here. The number of mistakes, the lack of training, this should never have happened. The lack of accountability is unacceptable. Number, the sheer number of mistakes, the sheer number of training exercises that our sons should have had access to, the number of mistakes that were made that day, it, it is literally mind boggling. The family of Lance Corporal Chase Sweetwood said the sequence of mistakes in the report read like the description of a murder. You look clear from, from March, you look clear from the beginning, mm -hmm. and it was, bad. it was bad from every single person down. They failed, they failed, they failed, they failed going down that line. And I shouldn't say this because it sounds horrible, but I, I've told my husband this several times. It's almost like when you go to create a murder, First day you go out and, and you buy the tape. Second day you go out and, and buy the car that you're going to commit the murder in. And day after day after day, you're building, up. you're building up to do this murder. This is exactly, and this is why I say my son was murdered. And I mean that because you clear from the beginning had red flag, red flag, red flag. They then they die. 
you're waiting for the report and they tell you we're coming with this report at first you're thinking okay maybe there's five things that went wrong maybe there's 10 things that went wrong you're looking at <laughs> i don't even know i haven't even counted an astronomical yeah. amount of failures here of things that weren't there from command to mechanical it was just terrible nobody i mean if if this is how we're going to fight wars, we might as well not even do this anymore. They were murdered. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Um, they were failed from the minute these were chopped into service to the minute it sank. Every yeah. person should, should be, be held accountable. They be all some had, had a hand in this. They all had a hand in this. Mm -hmm. Clear to the top, I believe. A lot of people should be court-martialed. For the family of U.S. Navy hospital men, Christopher Nim, the findings in the report still didn't provide the closure they lacked because of the circumstances of the recovery. I mean, still, I can't take that vision out of my head of him being in the AMB, drowning, or he hit his head, or what's his last word? It's still in the back of my head. And now knowing that this went on for 45 minutes, how he would be panicking. What was he thinking? And I asked him, once you guys get the boys up, please, I just want to touch him and hold him one more time. They never give me that. The thing is, like, I don't have my closure to even touch him or hold him. I'm Buddha's twin, but that's like our last goodbye, giving, sending him off to good spirits and good thoughts and prayer. They didn't even give me that chance. The roughly 2,000 page investigation details not only the mistakes that led to the sinking of the AAV, but hints at greater implications for the Marines and problems with the Corps' entire amphibious assault vehicle fleet. We'll keep digging into the report and be back with more details next week.